it's sort of brilliant pieces of booking that each way along that path, everybody that goes into this angle comes out of this angle worth more. <laughs> The grudge match, because uh, I like doing it in the Bob Ortiz voice as well. The grudge match yes, of yes. the century. He really builds it up. It's great. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. Uh, build up. Uh, it's built up over a year, this uh, feud, uh, this final match. Uh, give us the history between Taz and Sabu, not only professionally, but personally, because uh, weren't they teaming like really early in Eastern? And maybe even yes. beforehand, I don't know. Probably not beforehand. Uh, but... t- t- teaming until the time that uh, Sabu had gone to Japan. And he was in demand in Japan and he had it figured out to where he would be able to get back in time for the show uh, that he and Taz were to work tag teaming on. And so that night, Paul, when he didn't show up and I forget, I, he had recently told me it was flight delayed, something happened, whatever it's it kept him from getting there. And he then was really pissed that Paul went out and threw him under the bus mm-hmm. and, you know, basically made him the job guy to, to this whole angle. It would later prove to be a brilliant move again, you know, making chicken salad out of chicken shit because, you know, Paul was, was genuinely handed lemons that night when he didn't show. So he had to do some quick booking on the fly and best to lean into it. Then it's pretend it didn't happen as most promotions would have done before. Um, have Taz go out and say, he doesn't need a partner or whatever, that kind of thing. And but by going out there and having to lean into it and overtly talk about it, verbally discuss it in front of the fans, Sabu's fans, just about everybody in that building was a Sabu fan, uh, sort of took that like a little bit of like, hey, you're throwing our hero under the bus type of thing. So it created the dimension within the audience. And then the slow, steady buildup of that, which is uh, for you promoter one or uh, booker wannabes out there, go back and watch how that thing is built. It's masterful in each segue of this. And, and over this 14 months, I think it was, there were multiple interludes along that way that say, I might be in the ring with Bam Bam doing something Taz or Sabu hits and something happened, Candido hits, and then someplace Sab- but Taz hits at the end. And each one of those segments, when you watch it, ask yourself after you've watched the segment, is anybody worth less after that segment? It's a brilliant pieces of booking that each way along that path Everybody that goes into this angle comes out of this angle worth more. And so for the 14 months it's happening and the pay-per-view had been teased for so long that the, I think the ECW fans got to the point of, okay, yeah, right. It's never going to happen. And then it not only happens, but this gets announced as the main event for the first uh, pay-per-view <laughs> or what I would have called the Nirvana land for a uh, professional wrestling promotion. So, uh, luckily during that that pay-per-view i was on earlier in the show so i was able to get cleaned up and get upstairs to the crow's nest to be able to actually watch the match i i've told you before and i will multiple times to these uh, discussions we have i me watching a monitor it's sterile to me i can't get a real feel for it so i need to have eye on even if it's peeking through a curtain i need to be able to look at it and feel it and uh when they stood at the beginning face to face in the ring I, it sounds like I'm making this up. The hairs on your arms stood up and you could feel static electricity. And there was a in the air. All they had to do at that point was that. And the place was going to blow the lid off the place because those 1100 fans believed they were never going to get this match because Sabu had been fired. Then he was brought back. And then there was all this other stuff going on between T's, 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 T's. And now here they are face to face on day one pay-per-view. It was electric in the building. And, you know, the ends justifies the means. However we got there, whoever had to be thrown under under whatever bus to get there, it worked. And, you know, we often talk about, you know, did it work, didn't it work? If the building was packed, if those fans were electrified, if if it gave us a decent enough rating on pay-per-view, and it did all of those things, it met all of those benchmarks, then it was definitely the right thing to do. And uh, they, and those two, of course, put in the match. You know, they, they delivered when they were in the ring. Um, it was the first time I think also the fans saw Taz really selling for any prolonged or protracted period. So suddenly the invincible man does have an Achilles heel. He is human. And, uh, you know, all of those little facets that, that go into you know, my booker's brain is thinking of this and looking at this and thinking like, boy, that gives you so many tools to work with after this. So many things we can do beyond this. And of course the Fonzie thing would be brilliant down the road. Mm-hmm. With uh, that being said, is this the first time you've ever seen Sabu tap out? 
Or does yes. he pass out? I can't remember. I watched it a month ago. I, oh, I think he does tap, but it's like as he's passing out. I think he like does something with his hand and and, and taps. Uh, if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. But uh, yes, it, it was the first time the fans saw what they couldn't believe happened. But again, look at what they had done. Paul had done during this 14 months with Taz, tapping everybody out. The, every single fan walking in that building that night, whether they wanted Taz to win or Sabu to win, there wasn't one of them that would have believed that would be the finish. And so, you know, that is great booking when you can take those fans, especially those smart fans, on that kind of a 14-month ride. Now have another 14 months to play off of this. And so many other tools have now been created just because of the way we've laid this out. That's great booking, and it's booking I don't see anymore. Uh, everybody out there should be taking a lesson. I'd like to give you a word, Shane, and the word is flux. Now, uh, I'm a big Breaking Bad fan, and I think one reason why Breaking Bad's so fantastic is because the uh, uh, Vince Gilligan or whoever's written that episode, he didn't write them all, uh, he gives you what you want for a minute, and then he immediately yeah. changes the dynamic again. Pulls it and back, then, yeah. exactly, he pulls it right back. So uh, why I mention this is because then Rob Van Dam turns up at the end, strikes Taz, and then Bill Alfonso turns out he's with Taz. And, uh, sorry, not Taz. He, he dumps Taz for Sabu and Rob Van Dam. And there yes. you go. You've seen the match that was building for 14 months. And guess what? Everything is fresh once again. Yes. The dynamics have changed. And, uh, yes. and, and I used the Breaking Bad thing, so I just watched it for like the 10th time all the way through. But that's the, the that's sort of the similarity between Paul and that show and any great show is that it doesn't leave you settled, it doesn't leave you comfortable, but it's always sure. satisfying when the dynamic changes. And then you, it gives the audience something else to yearn for. Oh, absolutely. It's To me, the biggest thing with Breaking Bad, and I love the show too, is the incredible character development and growth through season one and season six. You know, this guy that's afraid of his own shadow by season six is a full-fledged drug kingpin I'm, murdering I'm, I'm, guy. I'm going to be a geek now. It was five. Yeah, it's okay, five. It's, <laughs> I'm, I, so, I, I'm I, sorry, I, Shane. I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> Chair shots, right? It's, it's always my excuse. But yeah, I mean, you go back and you watch that from first season. And my son hadn't watched it. I said, don't skip. Go right to the first season and watch it all the way through because everything that comes up later is a is an Easter egg being dumped in there for a reason. It's brilliant, brilliant writing, and I think you're right uh, that every as soon as uh, uh, Rob hit the ring, everybody forgot about Sabu just tapping and losing. Right, it now became something else, and so as before they could even think about what happened, boom, they're switched over. Now here we are in story two, mm -hmm. season two, and what's going to happen now? Uh, again, I, I as everybody great respect for Paul's booking. And I, I think there were times when it, it bordered on being brilliant. Uh, and there were selected times when it was brilliant. And I think this angle between those two to launch the first pay-per-view and to launch into this new heel stable and this new dynamic, new story, that's about as pitch perfect of booking as you can get. It really doesn't ever get better than that. Uh, having said that, Taz and Sabu, or especially Taz and probably Sabu as well, I can't remember if I've asked him or not, may have had some genuine antipathy towards each other. I don't know mm. why. Was it just because Taz didn't get along with anyone at that time, or was there something <laughs> something that just happened between the two? I, well, I think it was set the way that the, the promo, the original Heat was the promo that uh, uh, Taz hit the night that Sabu could no-show. Sabu took that as a uh, you know, betrayal. You know, like it was throwing him under the bus. Like I said, I, I can see that from his point of view. You know, sometimes travel crap like that happens, and it just you know just develops that way. Um, but you know, it was, it was the right thing to do from Paul's point of view too. I mean, these are not competing interests, right? It's not like well, I'm, I'm choosing this one over that one. It is, excuse me, it is Paul looking and saying, "What cards do I have here? What do I have in my hand?" And I thought I had the ace, but the ace didn't show up. Now I got to play my hand, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's nothing else he could do at that point. But the thing with Paul is, was he didn't necessarily fully articulate. He would give general flow direction, like this is where we're going with this angle or that way. Uh, but he would never say, okay, month one, at the end of month one, this is where we're going to be. And then that was not, you know, Paul was nowhere near that professional. Uh, but I think, I think it kept him floating on his feet and kept us fluid that we could switch on the dime like that. That was the first thing. I know there was heat from that. 
I don't think that they just personality wise clicked. You know, Taz was pretty much the straight edge. Sabu wasn't. And I think that there was a dynamic there with that. Uh, if you watch at times in the matches when they are tag teaming, uh, there's points in the match where you almost get to feel like they're each trying to outshine each other instead of working together as a team. And I think that bespoke of the type of personal uh, relationship they had. I don't want to imbue that they were hated each other's guts or anything. I think there was just that I'm better than you feel, you know, and I'm going to go out and prove it. Uh, and then when the, the Taz promo that threw him under the bus, I think that the Sabu was a betrayal. Uh, the way he was trained by Sheik and everything that you just didn't do that kind of thing. And I think it was a bit nearsighted on, on, on Sabu's part. Uh, you can see though, in hindsight, by this time, the guys in the dressing room that had been around a bit were sort of catching on to Paul's games, right? Like the, the, the games that in my respect were unnecessary. We had all bought in. None of us had to be swerved or tricked into doing something, uh, at least on the top of the card. And I think there was some feeling of that from Sabu. Like he, this is what Paul wanted anyway, and he could have just told me and we would have done it. And, you know, I think both from Sabu's side. Taz, I, you know, the, the idea you say, like jokingly said earlier about like nobody got along with him. Excuse me. This uh, seltzer water blows you up. Uh, but anyway, I got along great with Taz. Uh, I know Chris and uh, Bammer did. You know, Bammer wouldn't have done two jobs to him if he hadn't. Um, uh, I found Taz to be a pro in the ring. Um, I can't ever say anything negative about his performances, his promos. Um, there were some other things in the back that, you know, would, that were just people things, you know, that might turn somebody else off. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of that for me. If you had somebody else interviewing here right now, it's like, yeah, Shane guy was, uh, but you know, it's when you're doing a wrestling promotion and it goes back to Bill Watts, nobody wants just to have a whole bunch of the same type of guy. It's it's that that multiple mix that makes all that chemistry work and get that feeling of almost tension that's going to explode. Paul would exploit that, as he damn well should have for a company that size. Uh, so, I, again, I think in the, in the end, whatever the nuts and bolts were that went into the hatred or dislike between them, uh, it all worked in the end. Because when those two were standing face-to-face -face in that protracted period, just this – it's literally the hairs on your arms are standing up. And even like when I say it now and looking, you can see him again, like doing it right now, you know, it's because uh, I'm in my head remembering being behind that curtain and that feel that was the first time in that building. I'd felt that static, you know, where it's as soon as these two touched me, I, I, and they're a big part of it. Boy, I wish I was in the ring. Cause what you could do with that, you know, cause it's just at that point, just, you know, taking candy from kids.